Okay, so tonight we have a very special class. Uh, don't worry, you're not being videoed. And the tonight's, the tonight's class is about is about Mechanos Gog and Magog. I want to speak about um, what's going to be um, according to our prophecies, according to our, our holy Nevi'im. Um, what's going to be at the end of days? And this is a topic that is being spoken about a lot, I think. Like now that we're having this this huge war, this horrible war of of Chavot um, and, the, and people are thinking, is this the end? Is this is this the end? We have this tradition that in the in the Navi that there's going to be a great war at the end of times. And is this it? Is it does this mean that we're at the end? And and that's like this is something very 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 amazing. Um, it's I mean certainly something something crazy big. But the question is, is this the end? Is this the end? And so. Um, I think a lot of people are interested in this right now, and to look into our sources and see what exactly is this thing, Mohammed's Gog and Magog, and what do we know from our prophecies, and what are we supposed to be expecting? Okay, that is what I wanted to discuss this evening. It might be more than one class, but we will see. So, so first of all, so first of all, this this concept of Mohammed's Gog and Magog, that is based on two prophecies. And two prophets, one in Yechazka and one in Zechariah. Okay, we read about these two prophecies on the holiday of Sukkot, on the first day of Sukkot. So the Haftarah is from the prophet Zechariah, and at the very end of uh, the very end of Zechariah, it talks about that all of the nations of the world coming together to wage war on Jerusalem, and on Shabbos Cholamayit Sukkot. So we have the Haftarah from Yechazkel. Paraklamites, paraklamites, and it actually goes from one to the other, and the and it's it and both of these the, both of these psukim, both of these prokim and Yechezka, so they discuss this war of this war of the nations of the world coming against the Jews, and it's clear from both of them, in both of these prophecies, it's clear that there's going to be a big war with a lot of lot, lot, lot of nations, and at the end it's going to be good, at the end so God is going to get rid of all the bad guys. And there's going to be a happy ending. The words of, in the words of the prophet, prophet the um, Zechariah, "V'hayal shalom melech al kol aretz b'yama hu yehashem achadish ma'achad." The Hashem will be king of over the world of the entire world. His name will be one, and he will be one, and it will be a happy ending to the entire world history. So, interestingly, the this this term Gog umagog. So where does it come from? It actually it's only mentioned in the prophet Yechezkel. That who is who, what does this mean? Gog u Magog. So um, so the pasuk says at the beginning of Yechezkel Lamed Ches. So it says it says Ben Adam Sim Panecha Al Gog. Eretz Hamagog, put your face to, meaning to prophesize about Gog, from the land of Magog, who is the who is the the president of Meshach and Tuval, and say a prophecy about him. So, so the, the, these names Gog is the name of the leader, and Magog is the name of the nation. Okay, so, and this is the topic of Paraklamches Paraklamtes in Yecheska. In Zechariah, interestingly, it doesn't. Actually, mention the word Gog and Magog. Okay, in Zechariah, so it simply says, it says that, where is this? Sorry, it's Perak. It says, I will bring all of the nations to Yerushalayim for a war. Okay? So both in Yechezkel and in Zechariah, it talks about having this big war of all the nations coming against Jerusalem. However, it doesn't mention the word Gog or Magog in, in Zechariah. It just says, I'm going to bring all the nations. So, so the, the, the truth is that we see from Chazal that the point is the same. And that... The, we see this in we see this in the in this in the I'll confuse 
just here. Okay, so um, we see in, in the Sifri, in the Sifri it says, it's talking about, it's talking about in the Pasuk in Baal Eschah, and it says that, that we're going, there's a mitzvah of Chatzotzris. The mitzvah of Chatzotzris is that there's a mitzvah that, that when, the, when there's war, there's going to be, there's going to be a, there's going to, there's a mitzvah to blow out and to cry out to Hashem in prayer. And, and it says, and it says there that, that the, in the Sifri, that this is actually speaking about Muhammad's Gog and Magog. It's actually speaking about this war. Here we go. Because Kisavah Muhammad Ba'atzechem al Atzar Eschem so the, the Sifri says, the Midrash says, B'mochem is Gog and How do we know? Because it says, V'no shatem mi'oyveichem. That, how do we know? That, because it says, V'no shatem mi'oyveichem. That, E'zehim yuchama v'yisra no shayim ba, she'en al chashibud, and the mo'yitze elu b'gog and Then it brings the Psukim of Zechariah. So we see that the, the Sifri brings the Psukim of Zechariah and refers to it as Gog or Magog. Okay, even though it doesn't say Gog or Magog there. So they understood that it's the same thing. And the question is that like, how did they know that this is the, the, this is the same the same story? So the question is really, who is who is Gog and Magog? Like what who is this nation that we're supposed to be that we're supposed to be scared of? Or maybe we're not. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. if are we supposed to be scared? Of, like what is like what is supposed to be our this the situation of a, of a Jew knowing that there's this tradition, knowing that there's this that there's this prophecy that at the end of the day is going to be this huge war. So uh, like, what are we just take from that? Is, like, uh, is that supposed to scare us or is not supposed to scare us? That's something that we'll get to. But, but who is it? Who is it talking about? Okay. So, so there is a Gemara. The Gemara Megillah says that it's, it's, it's this nation called Ginta and the Yishami it says Gute. But the truth is that, that we don't know what these nations are. And the, probably the, tr- the true explanation is that the explanation of the Medrash Tanchuma, the Medrash Tanchuma says that if you add up the numerical value of Gog Uma Gog, so it comes to 70. Mm-hmm. Why is 70 an important number? Because 70 is the 70 nations of the world. Okay, there's a, there's a, there's a tradition that there's 70 Umota Olam, that it's corresponding to this, that we have 70. Um, bull offerings on the holiday of Sukkot, and which also makes a lot of sense because it's about Sukkot. So, the <clears throat> so the that these the the Gog and Magog represents the entire world is coming against us. Okay. Now, when we say that the entire world is coming against us, so what we mean is, so it says that there is that seven that seventy nations is divided into two categories, two families. There's the families of Ishmael and the families of Esav. Okay, now, now clearly, this doesn't is not to be taken literally. When it says that that half of them are from Esav and half of them are, are from Ishmael, that's not to be taken literally because the source of the seventy nations of the world is from the Pesukim in Parshat Noach. Okay, in Parshat Noach, so the divide after the Tower of Tower of Babel, so the world divided into seventy nations. Now, the, both Ishmael and Esav. They both come from Abraham. So clearly they're not the 70 nations, right? So what does it mean that the 70 nations are half under Ishmael and half under Esav? It means that the ideology of Esav and the, versus the ideology of Ishmael, that these are the two greatest evils that we need to be going against, and those are adapted by the 70 nations of the world. Okay, and that's what Gogol Magog means. Gogol Magog, because Gogol Magog is the numerical value of 70, so it means that they represent the nations of the world, that they're all coming against us in their entirety. Okay? <clears throat> so, so what is the, so what is the, what is the, the story of Gogol Magog? So, there's an interesting tradition we have that it's brought down from the Go'inim. The Go'inim is, is that the sages that we have after the times of the Gemara, before the Rishayim. Okay, so, so in the Sefer called Ritzgeyes, so he brings a, a tradition from Rav Hai Gaon. Rav Hai Gaon is, is one of the earlier Gaonim, which is the, right after the time of the Gemara, that he had a tradition. If he had a tradition, it's clearly 
a tradition from Chazal, from the sages of the Talmud, that Mohammed Gogol Magog is going to start on Sukkot. Okay, so, so this is, and this is why, based on this tradition, that's why that we made, that, that, the, that they decided that the first day of Sukkot should be the Haftarah of Zechariah, of Gogol Magog, and on Chalamayit Sukkot, Shabbos Chalamayit Sukkot should be the Haftarah of, of Yechezkel, which is the other Haftarah of Gogol Magog. So, so this, this, the, there's something about Sukkot which is bringing, to, bringing us to the end of times, bringing us to what's going to be like when, when the all, when everything, when the, the dust is about to settle, when it's going to come. So, so what, is, what, is the, what is the idea? What is the idea of, of, of Gogol Magog? So the truth is that this is a, that because it's in Tanakh, so it's something which was very much adapted by a lot of cultures. And both in Christianity, they have this concept of Gogol Magog. Um, but of course, it's, it's not against the Jews, but rather it's against the, the Christians. And similarly, in Islam, there's, an, uh, like, there's this concept of this, like, there's this uh, apocalypse kind of thing, that this great war at the end of times. And, and so, and that is, for them, it's against the Islam, against the Muslims. And, and so, but it's all based on the Psukim, and it's all based on the Navi. And then there, there's this understanding that at the end of times, things are going to get a little bit wild. Okay? So... So, what kinds of things? What kinds of things are we talking about? We're talking about we're talking about a great war. Um, we'll we'll get to it more in depth. But suffice it to say that it says that two thirds of the world is going to die. Okay, so it's going to be big, big. It's it's going to be craziness. It's not it's not going to be peaceful. Okay, it's going to be a huge, huge war like we've never done before, and and so so it sounds like something that might be something to be scared of. So now. So now, the, the question is that to whom are these bad things going to happen? To whom, to whom are these bad things going to happen? So if we look at the Psukim in Yechezkel, so it seems like that there's going to be the nations of the world, they're going to come against the Jews, and Hashem is going to stand up against them. Hashem is going to fight the war, and and this, he's going to destroy them, and he's going to defeat them. He's going to have wrath and have anger, and he's going to make this huge, huge war against them. And doesn't say anything, doesn't say anything about there being any any danger to the Jewish people. Maris, are you scared of Gog and Magog? We're living it. What do you mean? Are you scared about it right or not? No. No. Why not? Because it's a love versus fear. Because what? Love versus fear. It's either or. Love versus fear? Fear. Oh, fear. Okay. Amen. <laughs> so the question is, the question is that it says, it says that, there's, that, that there's these scary things going to happen. Are the scary things going to happen to the Jews? That is the question. So in the, in the, in the Cheskel, it doesn't really say anything about anything bad happening to the Jews. Mm. However, in Zechariah, so there's this one pasuk that makes it sound very scary. Because it says, it says that, it says they're going to come and uh, make a siege on Jerusalem. And then, All of the nations are going to come against Jerusalem for a world. And then the, the city is going to become captured. And the homes will be destroyed. And the women will be raped. And half of the city will go into exile. However, the other, the rest, the other half of the city won't be 
you want to be put into exile. They will stay there. So this this is the this is the scary part. That in this pasuk, it seems very clear that there are going to attack the Jews, and this is not just that there's something bad happened to the non-Jews, like that they're going to try. Like from the pasuk, from the pasuk in Yechezkel, it would appear that that the Goyim are going to try to destroy us, and then Hashem is just going to destroy them, and like and we and we we don't have to be scared. we but from this pasuk, it would appear that there's nothing to be scared about. Okay? And you now some people love to scare their students. Some people are like they like this is like some people some students also like to get scared. And like they're like so like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me. Oh my gosh, we're gonna die. <laughs> and like so so like a lot of so uh, a, a lot of I think a lot of people like we'll see how popular this video gets. But but I think a lot of people when they when they say gogo magog, so they have this like that like let's let's make life exciting. Like if this if just things are just like okay, whatever, they're like we we have a we have a, we we destroy Hamas, then then that's not so exciting. They they want to hear about a nuclear war, World War Three, everything is going up in flames, and I, and that, that that's that's exciting to them. So the question is that that do we have to be scared? So <clears throat> there's interesting the there's two traditions. There's two things that the Chavetz Chaim the Chavetz Chaim spoke about Gog and Magog. The Chavetz Chaim was the Chaznish would say that. It's like like nobody like since the Chavetz Chaim nobody speaks about Mashiach anymore. Like like we're just we're, we're like surviving. We're not thinking about we're not thinking big. The Chavetz Chaim was very into Mashiach. He even wrote a sefer at the piece of the Shua, which is which is devoted to the obligation to be into Mashiach and be into the fact that we're going to be to be redeemed. And so t- the two things two things that he said. First of all, there's a, there's a testimony from Rebbe Lapian. The Rebbe Lapian heard from Rebbe Chana Vasserman that heard from the Chavetz Chaim. Okay, this is like a very eyewitness, so like, uh, even though it's twice removed, but it's pretty reliable, okay? That the Chavetz Chaim said, they, would, they, they were speaking, to, Rav Chaim was speaking to the Chavetz Chaim a little bit after World War I. And he told him that there's three steps to Mechamas Gagamagog. There's going to be three stages in Mechamas Gagamagog. And the first stage was World War I. In approximately 25 years, there's going to be Another world war that's going to make World War One look like child's play. But in that war, Jerusalem will be safe. Right? He 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 knew that Jerusalem was going to be safe in World War Two. That he says, and, and based on that, he told this. This he told also to the Panevich Rav. He told her that Vahaya Nisha, that um, the Vanisha Bitzion, the Fleta Yer Kodesh, and that's why the, the Panevich Rav put that pasuk on the. Panevich Shiva, so that was his like hope that he knew that that would be the next place that the Jewish people are going to have their main settlement, and and so so, he, so in the second time he's not going to he's not going to succeed, and but but then but then there's going to be the third stage of Mechamas uh, Gogamagog that it's going to be in Jerusalem, okay? So it's very possible. He didn't say when. He didn't say how long after it's going to be the. World War II was Mashiach? No. no he, so he, he clearly, he, like knew, there was like a, he knew it wasn't. The people in World War II saw in the Holocaust. The people that were dying in World War II in, in the Holocaust were singing the Anima Mibibis Mashiach. They, they, knew that, they, they knew that Mashiach is going to come, but I don't think they thought that this is the time of Mashiach. This, this is the very anti-Mashiach. That there was, it was a very horrible time. <coughs> Now, interestingly, that there is, <coughs> there is, I, I see, I see a, a lot of misquotes. That there is, that people were quoting, people were d- d- discussing. You can, like, you can Google, like, was the Holocaust Mechamas Gog Magog? Okay, and you'll see that that's a, that's a discussion amongst people. Um, the, the so, Rav Zemir Cohen points out correctly that the Psukim, the Psukim say clearly. That the war of the war of of the of Gog and Magog is going to be in Israel. It's going to be they're going to co- come to Israel. And in, in World War II, nobody came to Israel. Baruch Hashem. Okay, it was it was a it was a plan. Hitler wanted to come to Israel, but Baruch Hashem he didn't. So it couldn't have been that the Holocaust was Mechamas Gog and Magog because Mechamas Gog and Magog was clearly speaking about Yerushalayim. Okay, so. So the truth is, and so the the the, the, the Lubavitcher Rebbe apparently the, some people misquote the Lubavitcher Rebbe saying, saying this. People, some people, 
some people um, misquote Rav Mordechai Liao as saying this. And, and the, the, so the truth is that I don't know exactly what Mordechai Liao said, but, but the, what the Lubavitcher Rebbe said, what the Lubavitcher says, he says, he says he's, that, that his, his words were, hu, akhde kach shalot tzarech lo aral kach, that nobody has to, that it, it, it shouldn't need to be discussed even. They said that, that it should be obvious that after the Holocaust that there is nothing horrible that's, that's going to need to happen to the Jewish people. Nothing at all. And, and therefore, we don't have to worry. It's only going to be goodness for the Jewish people. Okay? So, the Chavetz Chaim, the Chavetz Chaim, so... He was more worried about what's going to be at the end of times. He he also writes in the Kisvei Chavos Chaim. He writes that Lo Rachok Hayom Ahu Agadol Vanera that that it's not so far away. This great this great day of Bias Aliyah and Avi Shia Az Mechamis Gogam Agog. The Kol Echad Yitzarech Lutzchusim Gedolim Shia Ginu Alav Mehatzaras Shiu Az. And at that point, at the time of Mechamis Gogam Agog, everybody is going to need tremendous merit to save them from the tsaras that's going to be then. Okay? So Chavaz Chaim was worried about Muhammad's Gog Magog, and Lubavitcher Rebbe was not worried about Muhammad's Gog Magog. Okay? Meaning that, that there's... And the truth is that, that the... Muhammad's Gog Magog, per se, is, it's, it's not so clear exactly what it is. Meaning that there's... Chazal talk about two things. They talk about something called... Chevle Mashiach, and there's something called Mechamez Gog Magog. So what does it mean Chevle Mashiach? Chevle Mashiach means the Tsaras before Mashiach. Mechamez Gog Magog means the great war which is going to be the beginning of the end. What's Chevle Leda? is, the, the, word, the term Chevle Mashiach is taken from Chevle Leda. Chevle Leda means birth pains. And the, the reason why they use, use the word Chevle Mashiach, which is referred to, in, to, to giving birth, is because that it's a pain which is going to eventually be happy. Okay, so that's the so so the so there's there's something called Chavli Mashiach. There's, there's something called something called Tsaras before Mashiach, and there's something called Mechamas Gogamaga, which is going to be this huge war, and it's not so clear that it's, that, that that they're actually the same. I mean, it's clear that there's something that we need Tzchosim that we need. It says that, for example, that. It says it says in the Gemara in, in Sanhedrin that that Ma Yasa Adam vi Natsa Michavli Mashiach Yasok Bitora of Masim Tobin. That if a person wants to be saved from the Tsaras before Mashiach, so what's he have to do to be saved from the Tsaras of Khadim Mashiach? He should be involved with Torah and acts of kindness. Okay, those are the, those that is our that is our way of protecting ourselves from from the Tsaras. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that during the time of the apocalypse, that that's going to be dangerous for us. Okay, so if you look at, like we said, if you look at the at the nevua of Yechezkel, it looks like we're safe. If you look at the nevua of Zechariah, it looks like we're not safe. Okay, however, however, you'll notice that it does say in the, even in the prophecy of Zechariah that says that we're not safe. That says that that the that the that the, that the city of Jerusalem is going to be conquered and is going to ha- horrible things are going to happen. So it says that only half of the city. So it is possible that the half of the city that's going to be that's going to be conquered is actually the Muslim, Muslim section. So we call okay. Palestine? Right? So that's, that's going to be conquered. It's going to be conquered by Gog and Magog. Okay. But is that what it's gonna be like? Like I like that's how I'm interpreting it. Like you said, it's going to be like around, I guess, like Jerusalem. So it's like, is it going to become like Palestine? No, no, way? no. I'm it's saying that it's, 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 it says that half of Jerusalem is going to be conquered. Oh. That, okay. And, and the truth is that, that would be very beautiful because, because, because the Malbim in his commentary on Zechariah says that what is actually, how does the, what, what is the background? What is the backstory of the Hamas Gog Magog? Meaning, what is the what are the thought thought process of Gog and Magog, of like Gog and, and his and his nation Magog? So it says that the story is going to be Yisasfo Bnei Adam Lakachas Yisraelim Miyad Hayishma Elim. That the story is 
that the that Edom, the Christians, are going to want to take Jerusalem from the Muslims. So, so that would be very beautiful that the that the conquest that the that the taking conquering Jerusalem, it would, the, the, the Navi Zechariah tells it's only half, and the other half is going to be fine. So it would be very beautiful if that would be the Muslim quarter and the Armenian quarter. No, Gog and Magog. So the Gog and Magog is all the nations of the world. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I mentioned this a little bit before. The, the Magog, Magog is one of the sons of Yefet, the son of Noah. Okay. Um, so the Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Yefet. Right. From Shem came the Jews. From Yefet comes Magog, and also we know that Yavan, we know Greece, Greece is from, Greece is from Yavet, mm. that the special things about, about the special halachas about Greece, about, because they come from Yavet, um, and Mitzrayim comes from Ham, from the third son, okay? Now Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim is, is obviously the first ones who oppressed us, and it says as well that Mitzrayim is the source of all of our oppressors, Okay, because it's, because um, so so first of all, the Ishmael Hagar was Hagar Hamitzrit. Hagar was Hagar Hamitzrit, right? So it's really it's coming from, it's coming from, from from uh, from the uh, Egypt, and so so Egypt represents Egypt, which is coming from Ham. That represents all of Ishmael, and Yefet, that's Greece. That represents civilized culture. That represents the Christian Western culture, and so the Western culture, the Western Christian culture, is going to make a tax on the Muslim culture, and that's what's going to make the background of this whole great world war. Okay. Already so, on well, it's already side. happening. Mm -hmm. like in the they group. are already on the Jewish side, so to speak. Yeah. They're going to be on our side. Is what you're saying. Christians. So at at at, at the, we're like we'll see. Like, right, right. Yeah, it, it would seem it would seem from the Malbim that they're doing a good thing. I mean, Christians are already on our side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is, which is I mean, like, but overall, I'd say most support mm -hmm. Israel. They used to be our... There's enemy. missions to get Jews to come to Israel. Israel. Lots of Christians are some Christians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not all Christians, but not mm -hmm. Catholic Church. Much less than it used to be. It used to be, like, during the Holocaust, the Manish, like, I, mean, I, I mean, like, like, during the Crusades, so the Crusades first, like for sure, like they were they are our arch enemies. They were murdering us. They were they were slaughtering us. They were executing us. Um, but but and during the Holocaust, they were also horrible to us. That they they managed the uh, the they really uh, they were happy to see us go. Um, and 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 now now the Christians are now it's better. Now now they've done a lot of tshuva. They're like the the, 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 the Christian church. Look, there's a lot of anti. There's a lot of anti as well, um, in in all cultures. But, yeah, but this um, is a Western culture also. I don't think it's so Christian. I think it's. Yeah, I think. I think. I think it's more secular. To be anti-Israel is, uh, is mm. Western. So you're saying that like um, mm. in Gog and Magog, mm -hmm. the Christians are gonna like be on our side. Is that what you're saying? It doesn't say that they're going to be on our side. It doesn't. It's it, it, it. The way it appears is that that they're going to try to. That they're going to tr they're going to try to come against Ishmael, mm -hmm. and and then and then Hashem is going to just make this big war and then just destroy all the bad guys. Because also for them, isn't like they're still called Messiah mm -hmm. also coming? One second, mm -hmm. big war and destroy bad guys. Yeah. So doesn't mean mm -hmm. destroy yeah, only bad people. We spoke about that before. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the question is like, do we, do we need to be scared? That's the that's yeah. that's part of the question here. So the Babbage Rebbe said that anything that's bad that's going to happen to us has already happened, and there's nothing to fear. Nothing to fear. Like, we, like when, when we, meaning to say that, that everything that, no, anything bad in Muhammad's Gog and Magog, all the Chavli Mashiach, all the bad stuff, is behind us. And that's what it, and that's what he means, that when he says that, that all the bad stuff is behind us, he means Chavli Mashiach. He doesn't mean Muhammad's Gog and Magog. He means that, of course, there's going to be a Muhammad's Gog and Magog, but it's going to be a good war. It's going to be a huge war, and all the bad guys are going to die. 
and we are going to be safe. Okay, so that's the that's the approach that's the approach of the Lubavitch Rebbe, and and apparently of Mordechai as well. Whereas the Chavetz Chaim, so because he was before this, so he was before the Holocaust. You know, he passed away in thirty three. Mm-hmm. So so he was more scared of what's going to be in Muhammad's Gog and Magog, and uh, could be that. It could be that if he would have if he would have known how bad the Holocaust was going to be, he would have felt the same way. So, okay. So the question is, question is um, a couple of questions, two questions. Number one, number one, um, what is what is the what is the drive? What is the motivation of Gog and Magog to make this great war? And number two, why does God want this to happen? And that's what I want to discuss today. And then. Next week, Bezat Hashem will go into the details of what's going to happen. Okay? But, like, like, like just in, in a very, very general sense, so it says that there's going to be a huge, huge war, and two-thirds of the world is going to die, and then there's going to be a Yeshua. And, the, and that going to, after, after two-thirds of the world is going to die, so then it's going to be just, just, be, just be goodness. Then there's going to be going to be only goodness. And so the question is that, number one, what is the motivation of Gog and Magog? And second of all, why does Hashem need this to happen in order for us to get a gula? Why, could, why couldn't he just give us a gula? Like, why, why, can't he, why do you have to have a big war? Why, why aggression? Why, why bloodshed? Right? Okay. In Israel as well, or Israel will be safe? No, no, it's, in, it's specifically in Israel. We spoke about this before. It's spe- it's, no, 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 uh, of the world. So it's, but Gog and Magog is specifically happening in Israel. Then I spoke out of Israel. What? Then I spoke out of Israel. Then you what? Then I just spoke out of Israel. Loser? Uh, what? Coward? <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, if it's happening in Israel, let's move out. No, it's we're, in the front no. line. We're, 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 in the, we're in the front line. So that, that's also not clear. We'll, we'll speak about that <laughs> next week. Because it's also not clear if we are active in Mohammed's Gog and Magog or we're passive in Mohammed's Gog and Magog. Physical. It's not clear. If the, if the, if the like Jewish the army, level. if the Jewish army is going to be active or passive in Mechamis Gog Magog, in the Navi Yechezkel, it would appear that we are completely passive. Amen. It would appear that Hashem does everything. Amen. Hashem does everything. That he just sends these fire and and meteors and and uh, hail and and he just kills them just all by all by himself. In in the press, in the in the psukim in Zechariah, it would seem that we fight. It would fight. It would seem that we fight. Also, in the psukim in Zechariah, it talks about Mashiach ben Yosef being killed, which means that we are going to have casualties in Nuhamas Gogumagog. Meaning that the fact that we have casualties now does not mean that it's not Nuhamas Gogumagog. Okay. But also in the in the prophet in the prophet of Zechariah, so it seems that there's a pasuk that says. There's a pasuk that says, I can't find anything today. It says that the that the simple, that the simple soldiers will be like David, and David will be like Elohim. It'll be like, like the. Here, here, here it goes in Parakid Beis Pasuk Ches. By Yamahu, Yagen Hashem by Ad Yoshev Yishalayim, Hashem will protect on all of the, all of those who dwell in Jerusalem, and known as also Jerusalem. Vaya Hanich Shal Bahem, by Yamahu Ki David. That the 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 worst Jabnikim, Jabnikim will be as strong as Beit David, and Beit David will be never I never saw a pasuk like this. U Beit David kelokim kemalach Hashem lifnayim. They'll be like God. They'll be like angels. That's how great the the leaders will be. Okay, so so from this it would seem that we're fighting, right? That part of the part part of Mechamis Gog Magog is that we are is that we are fighting. So it seems to be, seems to be that these things are not very clear. Um, now, what we do know that w- what we do know about Muhammad's Gog Magog, if you want to know if, if it's actually like, if you want to ask the question, is this Muhammad's Gog Magog or not? So the answer is, 
will only know afterwards. Oh. Because what because the one thing that we do know about Muhammad's Gog and Magog, it's that it is the last war. And after and after the and after after the like we read from the Sifri before that the Pasuk of the Pasuk of Chatzaitras in Balaischa is speaking about Muhammad's Gog and Magog. And how does the Sifri know that? Because it says and you will be saved. What is the world? What is the war that afterwards there is only salvation? There is no more conflict afterwards. So Muhammad Gagamagog is the last war. After Muhammad Gagamagog, there will only be happiness. There will only be, be safety. There will only be peace. And so, if if the if after this war. Actually, there's also another, there's also another, another uh, sign that's going to be, that's going to be Muhammad's Gog and Magog, and that is that Hashem is fighting. That, that one of the, the this we'll, we'll get to, we'll speak about this momentarily, but one of the things that's going to define Muhammad's Gog and Magog is that there will be no doubt that God is fighting for the Jewish people. At the moment, he cannot see, uh, see that, like, the nations cannot see that because you have to see some miracles, like mm-hmm. that bigger miracle. At the, uh, in Muhammad, one of the signs of Muhammad's Gog and is that there will be no, the, no room for doubt. Okay? Yeah. So what does that mean, there's like, no room like for doubt? Like miracles? Yes. Miracles. Like, yes. Yes. flooding Gaza, Good. out of nowhere type thing. Yes. Like what? Like, like tsunami in Gaza, out oh. of nowhere. I don't know. I, I think it will have to be more than that. You know, yeah, they, 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 you can, the, like, justify they, that. They, they have, you know, like the like the, the the Western for the purple Palestinians, they're they're, they're 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 putting the bar so high that like Hashem like Hashem is gonna have this like I'm not like I'm joking like Hashem has his work cut out for him because like how are you supposed to convince these people if like like after they see the videos they st- they still say that October seventh never happened and they say that that it it didn't happen and we did it and first first they said right first first they said we deserved it second second then they said it never happened, and then they said, "We did it. We, we did it." <laughs> so, so like, like if after after the videos are there, so like, so Hashem will have to. Well, but Hashem, Hashem is awesome. Hashem can do. Hashem can do anything. So he'll he'll be, he'll be able to, he'll be able to convince the pro Palestinians that it's really him, and this is not some AI Can't generated. Can like, live stream right? on Instagram? I don't think that. I don't think that'll do it. I think That's it's, all. Right? Right? He'll, 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 he'll manage, but he'll some, yeah. somehow he will even be able to convince the pro-Palestinians that, that this is real and this is not some, some fake... Some <clears throat> we'll see, we'll see. The, now, I, w- one thing that I, that I noticed in my prepar- preparation for this class is that in one of the previous classes, so I spoke about the fact that I was, like, I was disappointed in the fact that, that the world is not ready for redemption. That like I, I thought that at the beginning of the war, so like the people were talking about, yeah, that Hamas is ISIS, and and I, and then then when the world turned against us, I said, listen, like when Mashiach comes, so the entire world needs to be redeemed, and if the world is talking like this, then they're not worthy of being redeemed. So that's actually a mistake, because one of the purposes of Milhamas Gog and Magog is to get rid of all of those bad guys. Okay, so all of those poor Palestinians, yes, you. So, any of you first Palestinians is listening to my class, so, 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 the, so that God will destroy you with all of his, that, that the truth is that even that we're going to learn in the Pesukim, in, the Pesukim in, in Yechezkel, it says that two-thirds of the world is just going to be, is going to be finished in a second, and even the third third that says, yeah, yeah, we like God, we like the Jews, even them, there's a lot of fakers, there's a lot of liars, that they really, that they really just are pretending that they like the Jews, but really deep down they aren't sincere, and Hashem is going to get rid of them too. Okay? So, so the, so the, so it, the Mashiach is, Muhammad Gog and Magog and Geula, it's, it's ready or not, here I come. Like, it, they don't have to be ready, because a third, a third of the world is a third of the world is, is with us. Like that's I'm not I'm not. There's plenty of uh, like there, there's enough pro-Israel people out there that that it, it works out in the calculations of of the Geula happening. Okay, so now, 
So now, what is so so um, so the, back to the back to my two questions. Number one, what is the motivation of of Gog and Magog, and number two, what is the motivation of Hashem? Okay, so what is the motivation of of Gog and Magog? So this can we can find? Could you get me a Tanakh, please? It's right behind you, the black and red, and um, right there. Yes, thank you. So this we can learn from from the Pesukim in Tehillim, Parag Beis. So Tehillim, Parag, Parag Bet, it says, Lama Rag Shugayim Ulaum Yagurik Why are all the all of the nations, why are they getting so excited? And the and the nations are speaking stupid things. Yisyatzvu malcha eretz v'roznim nos to yachad. All of the that all all of the kings of the world are are standing up, and they are and they are gathering together in the UN. Al Hashem v'al Mishicho. They're going against God and against their Messiah. Against against our Mashiach. Okay. So all the nations of the world. The reason why they're coming against us. So this is. This is a religious war. I saw an interesting thing that Rav Zamir Khan says that he that he heard um, he heard a testimony from um, something. I think his name was was Levi Alitzor. That he was a, he was a, a very a, a high high ranking official in the army, and he went to this to this conference of a different of different. Um, Different experts on military strategy of of, uh, of military like like what's going on in the world. So this big conference of of, um, of military experts in the world, and the they were asked a question, two questions. Number one, is it foreseeable that there will be a third world war? And and question number two, what would be the trigger to a third world a third world war? And and what the, the the conclusion of this discussion of all of these world experts is that yes, they do foresee a World War Three, and the trigger of World War Three will be on rekadati. It'll be on religious based. Mm-hmm. Okay. So th- this is this is what David and Malach is saying that all the nations of the world are going to. What are they really coming? They're really coming of. Uh, Jihad. Okay, this is the, this is. It's all about. It's all the only thing that's going to make a third world war is a religious-based war. Okay, so this is this is the secular the secular world. The secular world is is was based on their understanding of military what's going on in the world. So they are they are they are supporting what we've been knowing for three thousand years. The Devil Malach says that the reason why there's going to be a big world war is because Al Hashem Yanashicha. It's all against God, okay? It's all, it's all, and that's so CC everything that we've we spoke about in our three classes about the Palestinian conflict, about what they that they want, that they're claiming that they're the true descendants of Abraham, and we're proving to them that we're the true descendants of Abraham, etc. Okay, so, so, so that's why that that th- their motivation, their motivation is their motivation is that they're coming against God, okay? That they have a problem, they have a problem with. They have a problem with the fact that we represent God, and that is what that's why they're coming on Jerusalem. Okay? And that's why they're coming to Jerusalem, because they know that Jerusalem is the center of the, uh, is, is God's city. And the and the, the Midrash says the Midrash says that that the, the three times Gog and Magog is going to try to come, but the first two times he's not going to succeed to come to Jerusalem, and the third time he's going to succeed. And this is Mamish, this is Mamish exactly what the Chavetz Chaim was saying, that the first World War One was the first stage of Muhammad's Gog and Magog, World War Two was the second stage of Muhammad's Gog, and there's going to be a third stage of Muhammad's Gog, which is actually going to be in Jerusalem. And and it's it's so it's so interesting that like that this like like once again, I don't know if this is Muhammad's Gog and Magog. And I don't and I'm not putting in votes. I'm not and I, I, I really just like the, the, but it's, it's something that's interesting all all of us and it's it's interesting. I find it interesting that that the that the Muslims are calling this a Laksa flood. And this is about it's about Jerusalem. Okay? This is not about this is not about Gaza. This is about Jerusalem. 
And the thing that we know from our traditions that's going to personify well, the, the Muhammad's Gog and Magog is that it's about Jerusalem. Okay? So. And it's a specific conversation between both. Yes. <clears throat> so, so that's why, that's their motivation. That's their motivation. Now the question is, the question is, why does Hashem want there to be Muhammad's Gog and Magog? Why does Hashem want there to be, to end with, these, with this great war? So, there's, there's different... There's different explanations. One of them, one of them is very clear in the Psukim. In the Psukim in, in Yechezka. So, so he writes, I'm going to destroy all the nations. I'm going to destroy all the nations. And then he says, V'hit kadilti, v'hit kadishti. V'nodati le'enei goyim rabim v'yadu ki ani Hashem. Okay, the, when, when we say Kaddish, V'hit kadav, v'hit kadash, comes from this Pasuk. Okay. That, meaning that every time we say Kaddish, this Gala, this Kaddish, Mei Rabba, so we're actually praying for the end of the, for the, the end of Muhammad's Gog and So the Hashem says that the reason why he wants to make this Muhammad, the reason why he wants to make this war, is because his, his name is going to be very sanctified. That, that by destroying evil, so by destroying specifically the evil people that are coming against him, so that is going to sanctify his name. That's going to make him very great. Okay. A second reason is brought down in the Zohar, and that is that the purpose of the war is to pay back for all of the non-Jews that did bad to us over the years. Now, now what does that mean? But uh, but Hitler but, but but Hitler is dead. Hitler is dead, and all the who is are, as, so 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 the, so, the, so the Zohar says that it's actually going to be reincarnations of the very same people that caused us tzaras. They're going to come back into the world in order that Hashem should destroy them. Wow. Okay? So it's actually going to be, so it's actually going to be that when, whenever, whenever this is, whenever this is, so maybe Putin is really Hitler. You know? So <laughs> that, wow. that, that uh, whenever this is going to happen, so all of the Nebuchadnezzar is going to back and Titus is going to come back and Hashem was, was part of this, this big plan of Part of this plan of of the of the Muhammad is to is to pay them back, is to take revenge on the fact that they went against the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. And the third reason, the third reason that it's clear from the Sukkim is in order to, to in in order to make the world ready for redemption. And that is because part of the this because part of the redemption is a lot of people getting getting gone, getting getting being killed. So that only the people that deserve to stay around are going to stay. There's a passage, there's a passage in, in Yoel that also referring to the end of times, that it says that, that it says that the people that are going to survive, the people that are going to survive is Call Hakare Bashem Hashem. Can't find the exact words. But but it says that the all that all of the Goyim that cry out to Hashem, so those those the ones that are going to be saved. Okay, the, there's going to be a difference between it's going to be a clear division between the good guys and the bad guys. And the purpose of the war is because there's people that don't deserve to be redeemed. Okay, so this is the so these are the three three the three reasons why. And the three reasons and now now, now, if you want to, if I want to use fear tactics and try to get us scared for the people that enjoy that, so the Chavetz Chaim said that we need Tzchosim, that we need Tzchosim to, to be saved. Okay? But once again, the Lubav Shrebi said that we're good and nothing bad is going to happen to us and we're everybody who's alive when all the Jews who are around during Muhammad's Gog and Magog are, are good and we're safe. And, but it doesn't, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt like to, to take the with the Gemara's advice of a person who wants to be saved from Chavli Mashiach should be Osik in Torah and Gemulas Chasadim should. So, the, you know, so, Bezat Hashem, the Lubav Rebbe is right and all the bad is behind us, but it doesn't like just to be on the safe side, so we should try to be a little bit, a little bit nicer, a little bit holier, a little bit more connected, a little bit sweeter, a little bit just uh, not fighting with each other. And so, um, 
So, uh, so with that, Hashem, this is. Uh, I would like to continue next week with uh, more specific, more specifics about what's going to be. Um, but, but this should that it's always, uh, it's always, it's important to get excited. It's important to get excited. When uh, I, I, the Rav Cook writes that whenever there's war in the world, so when a Jew hears war, he hears Mashiach. And this is this is the, this is the way that we're supposed to be programmed. That when, when we hear when we hear about war, so that oh maybe th- maybe this is finally the day we've been waiting for. So that's, that this is the way we're supposed to be thinking, and that's why it's, it's so wonderful that the world is excited to learn about Nachum's Gogamelga and to learn about what's going to be Ba'achas Yom. And so, B'zat Hashem, it should be that the, the Torah should uh, should be a Nachas Ruach for 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 Hashem. That it should be really the an Eitratzon for a Geulah Shlema. B'zat Hashem. <laughs>